What is going on, Blockchain Monkeys? Eagle here, and I want to thank you for coming to my jungle. First of all, I'm no financial advisor whatsoever, nor am I professional in blockchain technology. But there is one thing that I absolutely will do, and that's keep my opinion. So today, we have got to get to it. We are talking about XDC and Globiates, a little bit of Danelle Dixon and XLM, and we have got to talk about XRP. We on location. I remember way back. You ain't have no swag. You did a little research. Now you got a moon bag. Now you got a new walk. Now you got new swag. You did a little research. Now you got a moon bag. Well, let me show you what the moon bag's like. You take them gains when it gets that high. I mean, the market may dip for a little bit. That's when I hurry up and buy. But me, I just want to rub them thighs. I like my oatmeal chunky. But that that's all in it. Shit, you're talking about the blockchain monkeys. It's a solo nation. Now, when it comes to crypto, we're talking about cold storage. Get your crypto off the exchange and into a cold storage wallet to where only you have access, okay? Decent wallet link in the description. Now, and if you look at the market cap, we're sitting at 1.2 trillion. And if you come on down here at number one, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, BNB, and if you slide on down here to the number six spot, you got XRP. But we're going to go into XRP bags right now because he dropped some heat on us the other day. I'm going to buy the new standard XRP relist during the swamp. The standard. What are you guys' thoughts about FTX coming back? So I, I think the plan's a terrible plan, right? And I'm not a creditor, but I'm going to speak with like a creditor hat on. You know, if I were a creditor, I would not want them spending any money and or time trying to actually reboot the exchange that could go towards returning money to their creditors. Right? The reason being is that the exchange most likely will not be an independently profitable exchange. And there's only two possible outcomes. It's profitable and it generates assets for the creditors, or it's unprofitable and it just further erodes the assets of the creditors. And for so many different reasons, I don't think that FTX has any innate advantage in its reboot over all of the other exchanges in the world and will be a profitable change. And so if I were a creditor, I would look at this plan and say, like, this is a bad use of capital and focus when they should just be focused on getting all of the assets back they can, not spending them, not hiring engineers, not building and launching new things, and just trying to return as much as possible to the credit. Okay, so turning to Globians, do you understand what they're doing over there? This is not financial advice whatsoever, but do you understand what they're building with their partnerships and with their compliance and over here with the metaverse and the many ways of staking and earning? Ladies and gentlemen, you might want to take a look. And now what they just added with Globians Pay. Are you ready for the shift? Now, coming over here to Shauna the Woke. Those new to XDC staking on Globians. Once a pool is full, the MN awaits deployment onto the XDC network itself. Okay? Need you to understand that. This sync is done around the 4th to the 8th of each month. So the recent 6.5 APY pool will go live early in May. Let's go. And now, coming in hot from Marina, you know she always drops this heat. Globus offers XTC staking up to 7% APY, stake GPX, XTC, and more at great rates. Are you listening? And like I had mentioned earlier, coming in hot from Oliver La Rosa, Globus Pay Security Token offering access to financial services is a human right, and we've made it our mission. I suggest you get nosy about Globians and XDC. Now, coming over here to RPU Reloaded. So if you are not following him, please go subscribe. Mine's Luke 25, according to Coach JV, Ripple will be running the banking system. Don't believe me? Check this out. What if I told you XRP is gonna run the whole banking system? Would you believe me? Here are the things that you need to understand. Here are the things that you should be looking at. First is being funded in and out of the market by YouTubers. ISO 20022. Bed now services. Volante, Hyperledger Foundation, and the players that are being moved around the game. JP Morgan just stated in their report that if XRP case settles, XRP is set up for mass adoption. Now, why would they say that, Warriors? Because they're all connected behind the scenes. 12 years in banking, understanding the payment flow and systems, understanding how to scale banks with the CBA Executive Banking School. Yes, we have peer-to-peer -peer networks like Zelle, but the problem is it's peer-to-peer -peer instant payments for you, Warriors. It's not instant payments for the institution. The institution has a liquidity issue. Your payment goes instantly to your peer, but they still have to do the settlement. 
with banks in a liquidity crisis, with the changes in Basel III, interest rates going to start going up on the back end of this year, going into 2022. Inflation through the roof. The way to fix the banking system is to get the money moving at the speed of light. Ladies and gentlemen, it is right in front of your face. He's telling you. Now, you can also go do your own research and not be lazy. Let's go. If you walk into digital wallets, the new banking infrastructure is going to be fee-based. The way they're going to make their money, the way they're going to make their profit is through customer service and moving your money at the speed of light. And they're going to charge you for every single transaction and the profit margin is going to be massive. So you have got to keep your head on a swivel. Now, coming in hot from Zanka, okay? You thought we were done with Globius, didn't you? The crypto bank that has licenses in several countries. Take a look at this. And I greatly apologize for not mentioning earlier, Globian Stex is an automated market maker using EURG and USDG stable coins as underlying values pegged to their respective fiat currencies. And so real quick, before we get into XRP and XLM, if you are not following Lady E, cause you know it's a time to heal, right? Why wouldn't you, okay? Oh yeah, you got a YouTube channel, Love Live Heal. Let's go. Now coming in hot to XRP. So let's say you've got 300,000 XRP. Just as an example, a uh, hypothetical goes to $100, okay? You're looking at $30 million. At the point when you move that into an estate in order to protect yourself and, and set things up for the future, you're looking at a 40% tax on anything above the amounts I mentioned before. Whether you're single or married, you're still going to owe 40% tax, whether you cash out or not. And so that's a consideration you want to take in um, and make sure you're being proactive about. Um, it would be ideal if you could set those structured up beforehand, before you reach those amounts so that you don't incur those tax penalties. Um, and then once it was inside those vehicles, um, whether it be you know, a holding company that's structured inside of an LLC, or I'm sorry, inside of a trust, um, or if you wanted to lease your assets from your holding company inside your trust to another entity so that it could, you know, do whatever it was going to do with those assets in order to produce income and pay you and distributions out of the trust or from that company to you as an employee. Um, there's a lot of different way to, ways to go about it in order to mitigate tax obligations. Uh, but the largest consideration in the short term for people, I think, is that gift tax. As an individual, if you held it longer than a year, you're looking at capital gains tax here in the U.S. of 15 to 20 percent, depending on the amount that you're going to take. And as an individual, you don't have a way to offset those tax obligations. However, if your assets are inside of a trust uh, or an LLC, there are a lot of different opportunities that you can use to offset or mitigate those tax obligations that you would incur. Uh, if you were to cash out. Are you paying attention yet? Have you seen the utility? Have you seen the ISO connections? Have you seen the partnerships with these banks? Have you seen people building on that XRP ledger? Come on. So, so especially what we are doing now with the Interwork Alliance and that we are basically uh, by building a solu solution according to, to the standard set by Interwork that we collaborate with each other to set standards and have blockchain technology as like an audit accounting tool. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's the most, yeah, and the, the blockchain has the most added value as an accounting uh, like um, mechanism, tool, basically, for us as well. It uh, provides transparency in the market, and that's why we're uh, utilizing the technology in our uh, solutions as well, because it uh, brings, brings uh, yeah, transparency to the market, basically. Ironically, um, certainly in some circles, has a huge degree of mistrust um, as a technology. I mean, I, I'm still so surprised. Again, COP26, the only mention of blockchain as a uh, innovative solution in in sustainability was as you know the worst for the environment and the least clean. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Steve? Yeah. Why are you yeah, exactly. yeah. That, yeah. that's the, why we we chosen to work uh, and build this on the XRP ledger. Wait a minute, you, you chose what? What did you choose? Why? Yeah. That, yeah. That's the, why we we chosen to work uh, and build this on the XRP ledger. Oh, okay. We that, uh, the right. Like, Just asking for a friend. That's all. To, to, to issue and, 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 and implement the document. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, before I let you go, you know regulations are coming or something to that degree. Take a listen to what Danelle Dixon of XLM has to say. We're here in Washington. I'm assuming you're having conversations around this. How optimistic are you on the regulatory front here in the US? So I feel like we need to get something done here in the US in order for us to really set the standard if we want to set the standard, which I think the US government is going to want to do that. So I'm very optimistic that we're going to get something on stable coins by the end of the year. The reason why is because we don't have a choice. If we want to have a voice in this, we need to get it done this year. When you say the U.S. government, who are you referring to? Is this a congressional question? Is this the SEC, CFTC question? Is it the Biden administration and directives coming from the White House? I mean, who realistically is in charge? Well, we've actually already seen the Biden administration indicate, at least on stable coins, that we need to see something happen there. So I feel like that's already been a directive from the, the White House and the administration. And then we do we need to see in Congress, we need to see them take that and run with it and create something for us. So they're in charge of the legislation with respect to stable coins, in my opinion. And we need to see it because once we see stable coin legislation, we're going to see adoption of more or, um, by digital assets of more companies that are in the Web2 space, which is essentially what I think we want. We want, if we want a strong US dollar, we want a strong US dollar globally, the US dollar stablecoin is a way to see that happen. So could you imagine not knowing this information? Cause it's the standard in this bitch. XRP. I, I went to YouTube University and now they mocking me. We know the degree. We say about a swift. Keep it walking. We smoke your elders in these bushes. Bitcoin is talking. You don't have to be rich to be taking uh, advantage of this. This was the beginning of the greatest transformation of wealth the world has ever fucking seen since World War II. Blockchain. Blockchain. We talking about an intellect, your choo-choo train. It's the LT up in these streets, man. That's why we rip all on that blockchain.